From First Data Field in Port St. Lucie, Florida, it's the New York Mets against the Detroit Tigers. Spring training on SNY is presented by City. New York Mets baseball on SNY brought to you by Ford. For great deals on Ford cars, trucks, SUVs, and crossovers, visit buyfordnow.com. By City, proud partner of the New York Mets. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com to see how much you could save. And by W.B. Mason, the official office supply company of the New York Mets. Who but W.B. Mason. As the Mets continue to sharpen up their starting pitchers, it's Jacob DeGrom going to the mound this afternoon. DeGrom was excellent in his first spring training outing. And he tries to regain his ace form after elbow surgery prematurely ended his 2016 season. We welcome you to the ballpark here in Port St. Lucie with Ron Darling. I'm Wayne Randazzo in today for Gary Cohen and Ron for DeGrom. Two perfect innings, three strikeouts in his first start. How does he build off of that? Well, um, Wayne, you mentioned his surgery, which happened on September 21st. It was really the best case scenario in his first spring training start. Threw harder 97 miles an hour than he threw at any time last year. The surgery was to move the ulnar collateral ligament to the outside of his elbow. He has recovered nicely, and after a 7-8 and eight season last year, I expect him to have a huge year. Today's pitchers brought to you by Cadillac. Behind DeGrom, we'll see some young pitchers, including Kevin McGowan and Logan Taylor, Eric Goodell, and Josh Edgen, expected to be on the mound this afternoon as well for the Mets. When we come back, Mets and Tigers coming up on a beautiful day in Port St. Lucie. We'll also hear from Steve Gelbs. He'll be standing by with Juan Lagares.
Baby Jackson in the house today to watch dad pitch as Jacob DeGrom will make his second start this spring against the Detroit Tigers in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, we will send you downstairs. Steve Gelbs brought to you by City standing by with Juan Lagares. Thanks so much, Wayne. And with Juan Lagares, who uh, now we've got we've got the sunflower seeds coming in. That was as Dribble Cabrera who said we needed to start this interview quickly so he could get onto the field after throwing them at us. But for you, this spring training, how are you feeling physically, first of all, after a couple of seasons where the injuries had to be frustrating? I feel great. You know, 100%. You know, I'm happy the, the way I feel right now. And I uh, just try to keep working and try to get better for, for the season. What what are you trying to get better at specifically for this upcoming year? Uh, try to be ready, you know, for those pitches, you know, and, uh, and a good count. Try to make a good swing and uh, try to swing more strike, you know, try to be a little more patient. How do you work on trying to be patient at the plate? What type of drills do you and Kevin Long run through? Uh, we got some three on the, on the K, you know, throws like BP for, for, uh, from close, you know, that way you can you have to have good reaction, you know, and uh, be ready to hit. Right. You are someone that in the past has been someone that Kevin Long has talked about having some untapped power. Is that something you're hoping to unlock a little bit this spring and, and ultimately into the season? Yeah, you know, I've been working from the from the beginning of the spring and uh, I know I can hit some bombs, you know, but I just have to learn more how to how to use it, you know, and that's what I've been doing right now. Just try to be ready for hit those pitch and uh, make a good swing. On the base pass, we saw you steal a base on Monday. That's something you've also talked about in the past, wanting to utilize a little bit more. Do you hope to steal some bases this spring? And, and is that something that you also view as an untapped piece of your game? Uh, you know, I, I know I can run a little bit. I, you know, I just try to stay healthy and uh, take advantage of that. You know, I, I know I can run a little bit. On Lagares, thanks so much for the time as always. Thank you. All right, Wayne, back to you. All right, Steve, thank you very much. The fans filing in. Should be another good crowd here today at first day to field. Jacob DeGrom on the hill. It's the Benson Tigers when we come back. Starting lineup for the Tigers presented by Toyota. Not too many of the regulars, but J.D. Martinez did make the trip, batting cleanup today. Nick Castellanos, they're excited about him at third base after he was injured for most of the second half last year. 
as it will be Anthony goes to lead things off for the Tigers in this one. It's interesting. The Mets pitchers the last few days have been ready before the 110 start. Um, so they've had to stay out there a little longer until the umpire says first pitch. Let's go. These pitchers excited to get out there and start this season, I guess, Ron. Anthony goes, swings away at the first pitch. Well, DeGrom's numbers last year, if you look at his ERA, that's a fine ERA, 3.04, but the record uh, subpar for Jacob. He lost his last three starts as he really started to feel effects of the elbow injury. Gets ahead of goes 0 and 2. But his ERA before those last three starts, Ron, was 229. Yeah. Well, he tried to pitch through the pain. He could not. And the season ended on the 21st of September. C.B. Buckner, the home plate umpire this afternoon. Oh, that was a good pitch there. Knees, corner. You can get that pitch. Doesn't hurt anybody's feelings to get that pitch. Wave and a miss. Good breaking ball by DeGrom. And he picks up where he left off. Oh, just great series of pitches there. He just missed with the fastball, so what does he do? He starts the slider in the same spot and then breaks it out of the strike zone. Andrew Romine, the batter now. He's the shortstop. Jose Iglesias is banged up. 93 on the fastball there from DeGrom. Been a common theme for almost all the Mets starting pitchers. They start the game trying to pitch inside to the left-handed hitters. Not quite getting that outside corner just yet from C.B. Buckner. Mentioned the injury to Iglesias. He went diving head first into home plate the other day against the Phillies and has a bruised neck. Mm. Just held on to that slider a little too long to DeGrom. When you have surgery in the offseason for a pitcher as Danny Worthen, it's almost like you have a new gift, a new toy to play with in spring training. Jacob DeGrom with two strikeouts to start this game. One on the slider, and that one, Ronnie, just a good old-fashioned fastball. Well, he's pitched, uh, what, two and two-thirds innings in spring training now, has five punch-outs so far. Brings up Nick Castellanos. See the 18 homers, 17 of those before he got hurt. He was batting 302 with 17 home runs in his first 85 games. And he got injured, broken left hand, cost him the rest of the year. Sharp breaking ball from DeGrom right there. Oh, that breaking ball right there. You'd like to can that and have that about 20 times every game. Doesn't get any better than that. A slider away for a strike, change up down and in. To Castellanos. Let's see if we can think along with DeGrom. How about the high fastball now? One of each. Let's look at the Lexus Mets defense. Espinosa, Champ Stewart in center field, and Tyrone. In right, Guillaume at third base, Cabrera, Walker, and Dominic Smith. I like watching him play at first base. And Tomas Nito behind the plate. We'll see how the Nito di DeGrom dynamic goes along throughout the day. Nito's never caught DeGrom in a game. He's caught him in some bullpens, but a little different story when you're out there. It's also a thrill for these young catchers to, to catch these talented pitchers. And Nito hasn't played above high A yet. He is on the 40 man roster, so good day for him. As Trubel Cabrera. Smith with a pick at first. And Nick Castellanos retired to make it a perfect top of the first for Jacob DeGrom. Cabrera with the far range to his left up the middle. And Tom Smith, this is what he's known for.
Geico Mets starting lineup with the Struble Cabrera, Yoenis Cespedes, and Neil Walker representing the Mets regulars. It's Luis Guillorme to start things off against Anibal Sanchez. Well, it was kind of a disaster year for Sanchez. The top of the rotation was so good with Verlander and the rookie of the year, Michael Fulmer. But at the bottom of the rotation, Sanchez, Palfrey, and others really struggled. Guillaume hits it right to Dominic Picacello at first base. One away. Just like saying that name, don't you, Wayne? I love it. <laughs> Big bowl of pasta up here, Ron. We'll be all right. That's right. Sunday gravy. <laughs> That's right. Gravy. Good job. That's Drupal Cabrera bats. We didn't see Cabrera play yesterday because he was with the Mets split squad in West Palm Beach, but he hit a home run his second this spring. <laughs> Obviously, these two know each other. Cabrera, 23 home runs last year. Most he's hit since 2011. See his career numbers, but he really became the heart and soul of this team toward the end, didn't he, Ron? He did. He picked, put everyone on his shoulders. I just thought it was just amazing. You know, it looked like there, late in the season, he wasn't going to be able to make the bell anymore. The knee was causing him so much problems. But boy, he gutted it out, and he played his best baseball down the stretch. You know, with Sanchez, at this point in his career, he's lost a little bit off his fastball, so he's a pitcher that has to get all four of his pitches over to be successful. Makes it a full count on Cabrera. Sanchez didn't qualify for the ERA title last year. He was nine innings short. Had he done so, he would have had the worst qualifying ERA in the major. Hmm. Number approaching six last year. That's his career numbers in 245 starts. Cabrera hits that one well, and the Mets have their first base hit. Looked like a little 3 2 changeup from Sanchez. It is. It's up in the strike zone, and Cabrera takes care of it. Just a short, compact swing. He's been hot in spring training. There's Cespedes. Speaking of hot this spring, 8 for 16, a couple of long home runs. Sanchez is always ripe for the long ball run. He yeah. gave up 30 homers last year, 29 the year before that, which led the American League. Well, Cespedes, is the most damage he did yesterday was on the comebacker to Rick Porcello, that Porcello was never the same. Porcello gave up a home run and a double to the next two batters and then left the game. You could almost hear Cabrera telling Sanchez, throw the ball to the plate. I'm not going to steal. They almost got him on that last big off attempt. That was pretty close. Sanchez got a good move. Quick feet. What do you think of those orange caps on the Tigers, Ron? Not a big fan. Not a huge fan. This looks like the Astros with the orange lid. When I saw him today, I, I, I was like, uh, the Mets playing the Tigers? That's what I had. Oh, oh. Cespedes jammed a bit. That was a Hyundai Tigers defense. Matuk in center field came over from the Tampa Bay Rays. Machado at second base. Romine is like their utility man at shortstop. And James McCann up behind the plate. There they are. Even the D is. Yeah, it's hard to see the D. You know, Wayne, marketing. Wayne. It's all about the marketing. Uh, who, who wants to buy that? <laughs> Tiger fan. <laughs> I 
Cabrera gets picked off. Picacello missed him. Not sure Cabrera wants to be in this all day. As a matter of fact, he does not. <laughs> Cabrera almost telling the Tigers there, figure out your rundowns. Well, these are the things that in spring training uh, are fantastic because you would never do this in the regular season. So it was Cabrera's kind of talking the smack and Sanchez showed him who's boss. Cespedes able to stay alive. I love the visual of a Struble Cabrera just giving up and running toward the dugout before he ever got tagged. <laughs> He's on a three throw minimum for the rundowns this spring. <laughs> Cespedes reaches down and pokes that ball through. I'm sure Cabrera, in the back of his mind, first a swing by Cespedes. I mean, this is a good pitch by Sanchez. Good hitters sometimes hit good pitches. Remember Cabrera last year, early on, tried to tag from first base and go to second on a, on a fly ball to the outfield? That's the first time he kind of tweaked his knee. Yeah, so that's right. in the back of his mind, not tweaking it this year. I wonder if he, when he went down to try to avoid the tag, if he thought, hey, <laughs> this is not worth it right now. Here's Neil Walker, three RBIs in the game yesterday against the Red Sox. Walker did that from the right side of the plate. On a bases loaded double. Well, whoever has the guts to laugh at Cabrera right now is doing it in that <laughs> Mets dugout. That's right. Not sure Giorme can get away with it. Short lead by Cespedes. He's not taking any chances. Dixon Machado. And Neil Walker retired to end the inning as Dribble Cabrera got himself in a rundown. The Mets don't score in the first. Jacob DeGrom has retired all nine batters he's faced so far this spring. Up against J.D. Martinez to start the second. Martinez doing there what he wants to do. He wants to hit fly balls. Wants to hit fly balls, and he's got tremendous power to right and right center field for a right-handed hitter. He was interviewed recently, and he was adamant 
that he does not want the ball on the ground. He doesn't even want to hit line drives. <laughs> he just wants loft. I remember when Chris Bryant first came up, he was quoted as saying, when I come to the plate, I'm trying every day to hit four fly balls. I figure one's going to go out of the park. Mm -hmm. Martinez from the same school. It's this one on the ground. Luis Guillorme's way. That's almost an automatic out when you hit one to Guillorme. We've seen him at second and short quite a bit this spring, playing third today. Well, he's got great hands. I mean, the one thing about infielders, you can tell right away if they have a special talent uh, because of how smooth and easy they make it look. We also saw Guillorme's special talent for catching flying bats a week ago or so. Highlight of the spring. Here's Tyler Collins. Interesting battle brewing for the Tigers as far as their starting center fielder is concerned. Right now, they don't have one. Collins could be it. Mikey Montuk's got a shot. That's why I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, Cameron Mabin uh, yeah. sent packing. Brad Osmus. Couldn't win one for Mike Illich as mm. the Tigers owner Ended up passing away recently. Mike Illich's son, Chris, takes over the team. That's why the Tigers are wearing those Mr. Eye patches hmm. on their uniforms, as they will all season. I know that everyone in the organization was trying real hard to get a championship for Mr. Eye. You know, he's not only known as the owner of the Tigers, Red Wings, but you know, he, when everyone was leaving Detroit and leaving downtown, it was Mr. I who still kept investing and still staying there and rebuilding and he's a, will always be a legend in Detroit. Full count on Collins. I think too when an older owner passes away, there's always this immediate thought, well, is the family going to sell the team? Mm -hmm. Chris Illich is not going to sell the Tigers. He wants to keep them. He's a baseball lover, and he wants the Tigers and the family. Collins gets a hold of this one and punches it into the corner. That's at least two for Tyler Collins. He'll pull up with a double. Well, DeGrom is human. 3-2 pitch. Looked like a little breaking ball 3-2 or took something off maybe. And good swing by Collins. First base runner allowed by DeGrom this spring. The batter now, James McCann. Alex Avila's back in the Tigers organization, but it'll be McCann's backup. Last couple of years, McCann has outright won the catching job. Mm. Easy for Alex to get a job <laughs> with the Tigers, right? That's right. right. Saw his dad here, who's the general manager, of course, of the Tigers. Wonder how that conversation took place this winter. <laughs> hey, Dad, I need a job. Yeah, this White Sox thing didn't work out. <laughs> See if Tyrone can get to it. He does. Nice play by Tyrone on the run. As Collins tags up and ends up at third. Tyrone saved a run. The ball stayed in the air just long enough for Tyrone to get to it. Tyrone not known for his outfield defense. He's a slugger. Yeah. Slugger on base guy. Used to play a little bit of center field, but he's a corner outfielder now. Filled out a little bit. <laughs> yeah. There's Ficacello. WBC, what's this guy doing here right now? <laughs> That's right. Team Italy did offer Ficacello a spot. He turned it down. Michael Conforto, the same thing. Well, both in the uh, kind of the same boat. They want to impress their teams, and Conforto's trying to win a job. Ficacello plays a position that He's not going to be able to replace the Tigers' first baseman, Miguel Cabrera. It's funny to 
hear Noah Syndergaard's comments about the WBC that yeah. nobody wins the World Series or goes to the Hall of Fame because of the World Baseball Classic. You know, you know he's, he's right in a way, but I think it's one of those things, Wayne, that you don't really know about it until you participate in it. And I'm sure that it's a real thrill for the guys that have agreed to go and play. The ground fielding his position, and the Tigers strand a man at third. Tyler Collins doubled against Jacob DeGrom. That was all the damage as DeGrom helps himself to get out of the top of the second. Tom Smith leads off the bottom of the second against Donnie Ball Sanchez. Sanchez allowed a couple of base hits in the first. He picked off his countrymate as Dribble Cabrera. Smith goes the other way. Goes makes a nice catch on the run. Good play. That ball was slicing away from Anthony Goes, but he got to it. We've seen that a couple of times from Dominic Smith. He has a great ability to hit the ball to all fields. This one just hit too much on the nose and stayed up for goes to make the play. You know, we talk about all the time with shifts and there are going to be hitters that are going to start to come to the major leagues will hit the ball all over the park. It'll be against the shifts. Travis Tyrone at the plate now. Mentioned Sanchez being from Venezuela, just like his Drupal Cabrera. He's actually now an American citizen. That's right. That just happened re recently, yeah, right? Yeah, a few weeks ago. Well, you know, it's the, almost the evolution of, of every pitcher. You start out as a young guy trying to make a ball club. Then you make a ball club and you start to establish yourself, as Sanchez has. And now he's in the fall of his career, and he's trying to reestablish himself as a starting pitcher for this Tigers team. Might be tough. Detroit starting rotation pretty set, certainly at the top with Verlander, Jordan Zimmerman, and Fulmer. Daniel Norris most definitely the fourth. Yeah. And that number five spot kind of up in the air, but seems like Matt Boyd is the one who has the advantage right now. Well, both he and Norris pitched well for the Tigers uh, down the stretch. Tyrone goes down looking for a strikeout for Sanchez. Well, a dart inside by Sanchez. His fastball is pretty true. It doesn't move too much, and he hit the corner there. One thing that may be in Sanchez's corner is that he's owed 16 million yeah. bucks this year. Yeah. 
Wilmer Becerra goes after the first pitch. Picacello has room, and Anibal Sanchez puts together a 1-2-3, bottom of the second. Get to City Field on April 7th for the first free shirt Friday of 2017 when the Mets play the Miami Marlins at 7.10 p.m. All fans in attendance will receive a There's No Place Like Home long sleeve t-shirt presented by Secure Watch 24. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash free shirt Fridays. Jacob DeGrom in his third inning. A little longer than the last outing. He only pitched two. Bad play down there in the bullpen. They called it the rock pile yesterday. Never was a name more appropriate. <laughs> About 20 guys down there. A lot of gum and seed consumption down there. Look at all that. Not even enough chairs. Well, you see the 90 miles an hour, but the ball is coming out beautifully out of the hand of DeGrom. Lots of life on it. The stadium gun actually said 94. Okay. He's up to 97 in his first start. And Montuk's going to take a seat. Well, again, a nice series of pitches. Starts him out with a slider for a strike and finishes him off with a fastball dart on the corner. Matuk just couldn't get the bat off his shoulder. Dixon Machado, the batter now. Talented glove man for the Tigers. Gives us Drupal Cabrera a chance. Two up, two down. We saw Noah Syndergaard only worked two and a third innings yesterday. Syndergaard actually has left the ballpark today. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Anthony DeComo from MLB.com that tweeted that Syndergaard has been sent home because of the flu. Terry Collins wanting Noah just to get some extra rest today and not hang around the park. Bunt try by Anthony goes as DeGrom scoops it up. And Jacob DeGrom has retired nine of the ten that he has faced so far in his first three innings. Good stuff from Jake.
Lots of strikes thrown from Jacob DeGrom so far in his first three innings. He's had everything working, Ron. He really has, sitting next to Zach Wheeler. It's good to see Zach. I saw him uh, this, this morning walking around. He's got a pitch in the game tomorrow, I believe. First pitch swinging Tomas Nito as Castellanos tries to stay with it. Nito is safe. Well, just a shot down to Castellanos, who is a very good fielder. Ball took a little up hop on him. That's why he didn't catch it cleanly. And by the time he got to it, the speedster Nito with the base hit. How about it? Catcher speed no more. Tomas Nito gets down the line. Now Champ Stewart, speaking of somebody who can get down the line. Stewart is an incredible athlete. Had to use some of it there to get out of the way. Stewart did very well for himself in the Arizona Fall League. Really put himself on the map. He had 300. He stole 12 bases. Mm. You know, that Arizona Fall League has become a nice showcase for young players to leave a nice little late reminder for their ball clubs how much they've improved over the summer. This one will get out of play in a lot of ways. You can see a, a player really change his prospect status for whatever that yeah. means. Well, how much that's worth, who knows? But he could really get himself on his team's radar by excelling in those games. One of the most enjoyable parts of this job is that I can see a, a player like Champ Stewart in this spring training, and then next year you come and you see how much he's improved, how closer he is to the major leagues, or not. Sometimes they regress. Champ Stewart, it's this one a long way. That's going to get out. Home run for Champ Stewart. Well, this is almost like deja vu every day for the Mets offense. They get lots of hits, and they usually hit a home run. And today it's Stewart's turn. I mean, rail thin and gets a hanging slider from Sanchez. And you mentioned before, 59 home runs given up the last two seasons. Mets have homered in 11 of their last 12 games now. As Luis Guillorme bats, he's got one of those home runs. He took Brett Cecil deep in a game against the mm. Cardinals last week. Not bad for a guy with one homer and more than 1,000 career at bats in the minor league. Can't get many by Machado as Guillorme is retired. Machado is kind of like the Tigers version of Guillorme. <laughs> See where the Mets stacked as far as home runs in the league. That's a franchise record for the Mets, the 218 homers. St. Louis just ahead of them, although the Cardinals got 17 of those from their pinch hitters, which was a major league record. Put them over the top. Well, it seemed there for a while in the second half of the season that Jed Jerko was hitting a home run every night. Well, Jerko and Curtis Granderson both ended up with 30 homers and 59 RBIs last year, mm -hmm. setting the record for the fewest RBIs in a 30 home run season. Lots of solos. Granderson at least was batting leadoff a lot of the time. What mm -hmm. was Jerko's excuse. <laughs> Astrubal Cabrera singled his first time, then got caught in a rundown. After several throws, he just ran off the field. He, he, he was run down by the time. <laughs> <laughs> and Cabrera now two for two. Well, again, almost a uh, mirror picture of the first swing that he had a base hit on. 
You know, the one thing you see from Sanchez here, and listen, there were some times that he was one of the better pitchers in the game, is that there's a lot of comfortable at bats. You know, he's, he hasn't been able to establish inside. <laughs> That's the Williamsport lead right there. <laughs> Well, knowing their relationship, I wonder if Sanchez will still gun one over there. <laughs> well, you know, Cabrera's having fun. Sanchez is in a dogfight, you know, <laughs> to stay in the rotation. So less fun for Anibal. That one got a piece of McCann. McCann is a big guy. But a little change up away, and that ball catches him right in the right calf. All that gear, and you get hit in the spots <laughs> that don't. That's right. You get, I mean, literally, it's, it seemed like it should be impossible to get hit in the back of the calf. He wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's laughing about it. Those catchers, they're a little crazy. They have to be, to be back there. Espinus rips this ball. That ball is gone. Two home runs in the inning for the Mets. Cespedes has his third this spring. Well. We've seen the trot of uh, Cespedes here three times now in spring training. And he is red hot. And it seems like every at bat, he's hitting the ball 1,000 miles an hour. This ball was a laser going out of here. Contact. Gone. Doesn't get any quicker than that. Now Neil Walker, the batter. It's a fly ball, but this one will hang for Matuk. There's two away. Cespedes now, 10 for 18 this spring. You know, that's a mistake that Sanchez can't make. That was on an 0-2 pitch. Tried to come inside and, and missed that over the plate. It's all smiles for this Mets offense, Wayne, in the last few days. Mets are averaging about eight runs per game over the last seven. Plus four more today already. Hey. Dominic Smith, the batter. Jeff Farrell is warming up in the Tigers bullpen. Smith swings and misses. Looks like Josh Edgen might be getting loose for the Mets as well. Not to ground my kid another inning, but it's been a long bottom of the third here. That's that's what it is. Volleyball Sanchez strikes out Dominic Smith, but he allowed two two-run homers in the inning. The first one.
Jacob DeGrom blew a high fastball by Andrew Romine to start this top of the fourth inning. Probably the last one for DeGrom. He's been marvelous so far here this afternoon. You know what do they say if a tree falls in the forest? Do you hear it? If we don't show the pitch that DeGrom throws, do we count it? <laughs> I should have used my radio background to really over-describe that one. <laughs> well, it's it's part of, of, you know, lengthening out, going through the lineup a couple of times. That's That's how you get ready for a big league season. Andrew Romine has the second Tigers hit. You know, two pitch from DeGrom left it out over the plate. Well, Sanchez made a mistake on an 0-2, and here DeGrom does also. See that slider, middle of the plate, down and into the lefty. Now, Ron, it should be noted that Nick Castellanos now wants to be known as Nicholas Castellanos. Really? Yes. Informed the Detroit media of this about a week ago. Edgen continues to get loose. Baseball version of the witness protection program, or, or what? <laughs> well, that's what Giancarlo Stanton did. Yep. Changed his whole name. Well, what, what's interesting about players in my day, you always had a nickname. They always would use the Nick or Pete or whatever. Guys like to have the formal name used much more often now. So Nicholas Castellanos it is. You could have been Ronald Darling if you were playing oh, now. Man, I, it's a bad name. <laughs> nice block by Nita. Quick back there is Nito. And like you said, never fa uh, pit caught the Grom in a game. So I'm you know, not always sure about where that slider is going. I would be t now Ronald Darling Jr. because I'm a junior. That's right. Everyone loves to use thing, junior. Yeah. You know, Gary Cohn said he can't use junior, though, if your dad is not <laughs> I did hear a celebrity. Say that. Yeah. He's got his own set of rules that he lives by. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Odell Beckham would be just that. Mm. No junior. Yeah, never known as junior when I was a kid, but my family calls me RJ for Ron Jr. And Keith does. Yeah, and Keith does. The Grom's had that slider real tight I mean it's a good sign that after having surgery last year that this early in spring training it's he's able to spin that ball away he's spinning it It's been interesting so far in these spotless innings, near spotless innings for DeGrom, is that uh, he has not been shaking off the young catcher, Nito. They've really been on the, the same wavelength. It's good to see. Nito will likely be at AA Binghamton this year. He won the Florida State League batting title here in St. Lucie last year. So when those guys get to AA, that's when you really find out who they are. Yeah. Good pitch by DeGrom. Cut down a really good hitter in Castellanos. Four strikeouts for DeGrom. Well, there's the grip of the changeup. You see the circle with the thumb and the forefinger, the pointer finger. And to be able to throw a right-hander to a right-handed batter, that changeup down and away, to keep it away, it's a real talent. It's hard to do. Ball always wants to leak back over the inside part if you don't throw it correctly. Here's J.D. Martinez. How much did you tinker with grips mm. when you were pitching? I did. I, I tinker all the time. I think that even over the course of a season, 
the grip that you have on a breaking ball might change uh, from start to start. It just feels right in your hands a certain way. I never had a change up, so I always threw a split finger. So that was a grip that never changed. It was always the same. When I used to throw my breaking ball, I used to always catch my thumbnail on my finger. And usually by the end of the game, I'd have it ripped open and bleeding. And to this day, I still have a scar from throwing breaking balls 30 years later. Huh. Dan Worthen, he's probably got some scars from the overuse that he suffered in his pitching career. Could be a double play. Guillaume with the scoop to start it. And the Mets go around the horn to win the inning. Luis Guillaume continuing with his brilliant defense this spring. Picks that one out of the dirt to go 5-4-3 around the horn. Veteran reliever Mark Lowe takes over in the bottom of the fourth for the Tigers. You see that unsightly ERA, 7-11. Yeah, looking to rebound to lots of walks, lots of hits giving up, giving up. Had a lot of successful years in Seattle. Travis Tyrone starts the fourth against Mark Lowe. Lowe was also the losing pitcher in the famous game six of the 2011 World Series. He gave up the David Freeze homer. Good positioning by Machado and a great play on top of it. We've seen some good defense in the last inning. We really have. Uh, Guillaume, we've talked about. Watch him at third base on this ground ball from Martinez on the short hop. Watch his feet. See how he's open there? When you are open like that, you're able to get rid of the ball so quickly. Most third basemen catch it, then they get their feet positioned to throw. So not a collegiate degree for Guillaume, more of a PhD as far as his fielding is concerned. Now Wilmer Becerra stands in. We go now to Steve Gelbs, whose report today is brought to you by Ram. Hi, Steve. How you doing, Wayne? Here with Michael Conforto, who's off to a great start this spring, hitting 360 so far. Michael, what's been working for you so far early on here in camp? Uh, you know, just getting my feet wet here. Um, 
you know, using my legs and in, in, in my swing a lot, and um, you know, just working on a lot of things that K Long and, and Six have been have been uh, you know just harping on this uh, this off season and, and throughout the spring. And perfect, there we go. And it's spring training. Yeah, it's been it's been good so far. So I'm excited. And you know what? When when you come into the clubhouse for the first time or when we come into the clubhouse for the first time the one thing that stands out immediately about you is how in shape you are and you weren't out of shape before but uh, it really seems like you focused very hard on that this off season. how come uh, I think it's a lot of reasons I mean I I wanted to come in in the best shape possible just because you know I think that gives me the best chance of, of having success and um, I thought that was a place that I I could improve um, you know as, as well as as it, as a lot of places um, you know I just want to come in a, a better overall player and, and I think that was somewhere I can improve what was the process like of uh, you know getting into this type of shape this offseason what did you have to cut out what type of workouts did you change I didn't change much with the workouts I mean I obviously I worked hard um, you know with my workouts but it was more just not eating out so much um, a lot of chicken a lot of rice and broccoli and really boring foods um, <laughs> but you know, it's just it's just being smarter about about my diet and and uh, making sure that I'm putting the right fuel into the body and and um, you know that that translates out on the field uh, for sure. You know, you mentioned working on specific things this off season, talking to, to Kevin Long, to Pat Russler, James Wagner. The New York Times had a great kind of in-depth article this week about just how much you put into it. What was the specific process um, that you two or, or you three, I should say, were working towards? What was the one or two things that you said, this needs to get better for this upcoming season? Well, I think it just starts with the lower half, that's for sure. Uh, um, that's that's really what we wanted to work on. I think that that translates to a lot of a lot more consistency in my swing. Um, and, you know, once once you hammer that out in the off season, you come out here and play. Um, you're not thinking about anything but but doing your job and, and uh, executing um, you know so that's that's what all the work in the off seasons for and that's what spring trainings for and, and hopefully uh, once the season gets going it's just playing baseball and um, you know just being natural out there this is a long spring training spring training can be monotonous already but this is a long one how do you break up the time when you're not here at the field you guys had an off day on Tuesday what type of stuff do you like to do in Port St. Lucie uh, well for the off day we a bunch of the guys went to a hockey game down in Fort Lauderdale. Um, that was fun. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's definitely it's long hours at the field. Um, so once we get home, we're, we're ready to get some rest. Um, you know, but it's just hanging out with the guys. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time together. Um, and, uh, you know, just go out, get, get some good food, um, make sure we get some rest, though. Long, long hours here, but it's all good work and, and just getting us prepared for the season. Got some food, but that food we hear from you is pretty bland. Michael Conforto, <laughs> thanks so much for the time. Thank you. All right, and uh, Wayne, Michael Conforto was at a, a hockey game on Tuesday. I, I think I was at a hockey game, and I think you were there too, probably that same one. <laughs> thanks, Dave. We were <laughs> watching hockey the other night. It's hard for guys like Randazzo or Conforto's to eat boring food. It right? really <laughs> is. It really is. I understand what Michael's going through. <laughs> Wilmer Becerra hits this one sharply, and that's a base hit. Kicks around the corner as Becerra has a one-out double. The other guy in that Cindergar Darno trick. Yeah, and he's been impressive. You know, he's gone from a, you know, a, a guy added in on a trade to a guy that you envision might help your team down the stretch. Now Tomas Nito will bat. He had the base hit in front of Champ Stewart's home run in the third. That's homer twice in that third inning. Cespedes hit the other as Anibal Sanchez got roughed up. Nito just in front of that one. Tonight at 6, join the discussion as a panel of team insiders connect with fans via social media to tackle all your questions about the latest Mets news, plus highlights from today's game and up-to-the-minute reports from camp on Mets Talk Live tonight at 6, only on SNY.
Nicholas Castellanos with the long throw to get Nita. Here's Champ Stewart, two-run homer his first time. Long and lean, he's as fast as he looks, if not faster. He's got some power, too, as we saw. Had 12 home runs last year. He had eight home runs, rather. He had 12 doubles, seven triples, but he had 40 steals last year. Mm. and breaking ball from Sanchez and Stewart some great power to left that was a no doubter one thing Stewart needs to do is cut down on the strikeouts 168 last year mm. he'll likely be a double-a this year spent some time at Binghamton last season Takes another shot at left. This one will hang for goes. And the side retired. Mets get a double from Wilmer Becerra, but that's it. Four nothing after four. Saturday, Grapefruit League Base. DeGrom was just uh, so impressive today. Had everything working, slider, fastball, and change. Uh, he was able to spot his pitches, worked really well with the young catcher, Thomas Nito, who did a great job of framing DeGrom's pitches. And uh, when you have a day like this, that's great work. Josh Edgen, big spring training for him. 16 games in that high ERA last year. Josh Edgen trying to crack the roster. See if the Mets even take more than one lefty. Mm. Don't necessarily have to. I mean, you'd like to. I mean, you, you always would like to have a backup lefty, only because, let's say, Blevins pitches two, three days in a row. You know, you'd like to have another guy uh, that you could use if Jerry has the day off. Edgen's gotten lefties out in the past, had a good couple of seasons. Josh Smoker looked pretty good at times yeah. at the end of last year, too. Not many decisions for Terry Collins and his staff, but there are a few. Did you see the uh, coach, Dick Scott, with that motion with his hand? What he was telling Terry is that Edgen is kind of pushing the ball up there instead of letting it snap out of his fingers. Didn't have a good feel for that one, it looked like. Well, I think that's where Edgen 
is. I think he's got to get a little more consistent, Wayne. It's almost like he'll throw one real good pitch and then one not so good. He's got to be a little more uh, consistent. There's a good breaking ball to strike out Collins. That was one of the good ones. Outstanding breaking ball that started right at Collins. So he drops down a little bit from three quarter. And he catches Collins looking. Motion's compact. And you see he throws that pitch with that closed front foot. Sometimes that's an issue, but not that time. Edge had only pitched in 16 major league games last year. On top of that, when he's pitching, he's mostly a specialist, only 10 innings. So if you give up a few runs, the ERA starts to climb quickly, as it was 523 last year for Edge. Another chance for Kiorme. Mm. Smith could not get the tag. He thought he had it. But McCann's aboard. Well, that was just nonchalant uh, chalant on uh, Giorme's part there. Instead of standing up and throwing a strike, he kind of lobs it over there, and that's why the ball sailed on him. I thought that Dom came back with the tag and got him before he touched the bag, but maybe not. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, well, again, let's see how good Dominic Smith is. Regular season, that's an out. E5 today. What I mean by regular season, that's an out, is they go to replay yeah. and change that call. Picacello jam. Met spring training baseball always live with the MLB.com at bat mobile app. Stay connected all spring with radio broadcast, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat today. Josh Edgen will come out. Right handed batter due up. So Ben Rowan, the submariner, will come in. Ben Rowan enters the game. You see what he did in the minor leagues last year, but trying to make big league club at the very least add some depth 
at AAA Las Vegas, non-roster invite, and a submarine right-hander run. Yeah, my generation of player, Kent Colby, Dan Quisenberry. Ben Rowan comes from that same school. You just don't see it too much anymore. Yeah, you're, you're right. Because of that delivery, he doesn't throw hard. He tops out at like 82, which is so unusual for a pitcher of this era when you see all the 95s and above. Little blooper. A base hit for Mikey Matuk. A former Tampa Bay Ray is aboard. Well, the one thing you want when you have a submariner, and this is his motion, that closed front foot, and he drops that entire chest down to throw that ball, releases it below his knee, is that you want a pitcher that comes in and throws this way that the other team cannot elevate the ball off him. You want him to come in and get ground balls. And Matuk was able to elevate that just enough to right field. Mets in 2006, Chad Bradford had a, a great year for the Mets, Submariner. Really makes a pitcher like this a specialist in a lot of ways. He's really only going to be capable of getting right-handed batters out because lefties will not be fooled by that delivery whatsoever. Well, when these guys are really good, you can bring them in. You can get two outs on one pitch if you need a double play ball. There's Quite a, a spinner there. That's the first breaking ball. When the submariners throw a breaking ball, it doesn't break too much. It just spins up there, but it's such a different look. Watch that front foot. He almost tucks it behind the back foot. My roommate in, in AAA and then in the major leagues was a guy named Terry Leach, who was a submariner and had an amazing season for the Mets. I want to say in 1987, 11 and 1 or yeah. something like that. Selma, Alabama, one of the great guys that I ever played with. As Drupal Cabrera, a close play at second, but Matuk is retired, and Ben Rowan gets the final out in this fifth inning. Cabrera waiting for it. Matuk hustling into second base, but just in time. The new.
Fifth inning recap presented by Ford. Jacob DeGrom outstanding today, and Ioannis Cespedes continues to rip everything in sight. New pitcher is Alex Wilson. He has a connection to Cespedes. Former Red Sox pitcher was traded with Cespedes to the Tigers for Rick Porcello. Mm, good call. Well, he had a fine season last year out of that bullpen. Established all his career highs. Now the Tigers need more like that yeah. from their pitching staff. Their offense is as scary as it gets in the American League. They got a lot of thumpers, but somebody's got a pitch behind their top three starters. Handled by Austin Romine. It's Andrew Romine. Austin, of course, his brother. That's, That's right. a New York Yankee. Andrew Romine played every position except catcher last year, even pitched in a game. So the two Romine brothers together played all nine positions last <laughs> That's season. That's right. There's Andrew. He handled eight of the nine, and Austin had the other one. His father was a big leaguer, too, I believe. Yeah, Kevin was on the 86 Red Sox. Didn't Was not on the postseason roster, but he did play for that team and was with Boston five or six years in that era. Rafael Montero's had a good spring. See if he can continue that as the vulture stands behind him, Phil Regan. <laughs> Gotta let our viewers know why he's called the vulture. It's a baseball term for a reliever that kind of happens upon victories. <laughs> yeah, the starter goes four and two thirds. The reliever comes in and gets the final out in the fifth. He's the winning pitcher all of a sudden. That's the term, vulture. Phil Regan, he really did that in a time where the bullpens weren't specialized, there wasn't a closer, so it was more like the starter would pitch six or seven innings, keep the team in the game, and then Phil Regan would pitch the last two or three, That's right. and the team would win all of a sudden, and he'd be the winning pitcher because of it. Cabrera takes strike three. Alex Wilson's retired the first two. Good pitch there. Fastball right at Cabrera. Came back over the middle of the plate. Just stunned him. You mentioned Phil Reagan, who's dedicated his life to being a coach in the major leagues after he played. It's Guy Conti's 75th birthday today, a man who's dedicated his life to the game of baseball. 47 years of coaching for Guy Conti. One of the absolute best gentlemen in the game. There he is. Well, the Mets are blessed with some great coaches in their minor league system. Guy Conti is one of those guys that nobody has a bad word to say about him. That's how respected he is in the game. Two and zero oh on Cespedes. Does it help to have? Those types of coaches, not only guys who are experienced and been around, but have been in the same organization for a while. You know, I think of the word continuity for the Mets, and that hasn't always been the case uh, since we came on the air in 2006, but they really do have a continuity now with their coaches, not only in the major league level, but in minor league level. One hopper for Andrew Romine. And Cespedes with the bat in hand is retired during the inning.
That's Luis Carpio. He's in the game now at second base. Luis Guillorme moves over from third to short. New third baseman's L.J. Mazzilli. And left field, Patrick Biondi. And on the mound, Rafael Montero. Trying to bounce back. Last couple of years haven't gone so well, but so far it's been a pretty decent spring for Montero. You know, it's interesting on a day that Jacob deGrom starts the game, Montero and deGrom will always be intertwined. Came up at the same time. Montero probably at that point the bigger prospect. But things have changed. Montero trying to get himself back on the map. Ten strikeouts in seven innings this spring. He's only given up two hits. A little change up there from Montero. Back to back. You know, we had edged in the game with some important spring training for Josh. Most important spring training for Rafael Montero. And he gets the corner. C.B. Buckner wasn't giving that early in the game, but Anthony goes, falls victim here. Well, after a few uh, change-ups, the fastball by Montero, four seams. And true to that outside corner. Again, uh, Nito's done a nice job of framing pitches behind the plate. Andrew Romine, one for two with a base hit. Tigers only have three hits in this game. MetsBlog.com, all things Mets all year long with a continuous stream of all the latest scoops and developments from spring training featuring behind the scenes video and live updates straight from Port St. Lucie on MetsBlog, presented by City, featured on SNY.TV. You notice all those ads that you read? Steve Gelbs makes an appearance on almost every single one at some point. It's like the six degrees of separation for Steve. Pretty much the face of the network. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Smith couldn't reach it. And Andrew Romine has his second hit. Interesting that Smith was moving a little to his left right before the pitch was thrown. That might have been a changeup that Montero was throwing, so he's anticipating the ball being hit down the line. It was hit to his right. See how Montero handles Nicholas Castellanos and J.D. Martinez. Two starters, and two very good hitters in the Tiger lineup. So a guy dressed as Alan Trammell or something down here, wearing a full Tigers uniform. He is. <laughs> Castellanos looks at a strike. I mean, that's false hustle, isn't it? Yeah. Wonder if, wonder if that's Al Kalon. <laughs> Runner goes, and Castellanos with a base hit. Going to get up the alley before Biondi can get to it. Romine's going to try and score. Biondi's throw just goes into the middle of the infield. Nobody there to cut it off. As Biondi airmailed Guillorme, and Castellanos with a double to give Detroit its first run. Well, hit and run here by Brad Osmus and the Tigers. Castellanos with the ball in the gap and right here beyond he's got to hit Guillaume they would have had to play at the plate if he had hit the cutoff man he did not Romine's got good speed as soon as he recognizes that it's a hit he picks up his third base coach Dave Clark who waves him around Castellanos lifted for a pinch runner that Zach Cox at second base Good call by you, Wayne. Is that it's going to be interesting? The manager is going to be watching this closely. How Montero gets through these two good hitters. Castellanos got him. See what he can do with J.D. Martinez. 
Martinez 0 for 2, bounced into a double play as last time. Good cut, but it's 0 and 2. Shane Green throwing in the Tiger bullpen. Check swing, strike three, Martinez went around. So Montero rebounds to strike out J.D. Martinez. Now Tyler Collins, the batter. Remember last year when Collins got himself into some hot water and making an obscene gesture to the fans at Comerica Park? Never works, by the way. <laughs> you see that sometimes on the road where fans are heckling you and you, you lose your cool for a second, but it was at home. Yeah, there's some things that, that never work, and one of them is, is <laughs> doing that or criticizing your home fan base. The fan is always right, Wayne, always. Dominic Smith soaks that one up, and Rafael Montero limits the damage after the RBI double by Castellanos. New York Mets baseball and SNY is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota's one for everyone sales event is going on now. Toyota, let's go places. By Empire City Casino, Manhattan's closest casino, game on. And by Fios, by Verizon. Fios is not cable, we're wired differently. Visit getfios.com today. Shane Green's on the mound for the Tigers. 50 appearances last year. Three of those starts for Shane Green, who came over from the Yankees in a trade. Well, the LJ Mazzilli to lead off for the Mets in this bottom of the sixth inning. Saw Mazzilli start at third base yesterday. Green was involved in that three team trade. Where D.D. Gregorius came to the Yankees. D.D. has been an outstanding player since he came to New York. Some big shoes that D.D. had to fill. The biggest shoes, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah.
some thought that Derek Jeter might get involved in the bid for the Marlins. Hmm. Inside out swing as Dixon Machado takes care of Mazzilli. Take a look at the Mets' upcoming schedule presented by W.B. Mason. We'll be back with you on Saturday with the Washington Nationals here in Port St. Lucie. Tomorrow's actually a split squad, so the Mets will have Matt Harvey pitching against the Astros here at first day of field, and Zach Wheeler will get the outing against the Braves. No TV tomorrow, Wayne. You can nope. rest the pipes. I know. Come back at you Saturday. I'll be with Keith <laughs> for the Mets and Nationals on Saturday. Dominic Smith 0 for 2 in this one. Eric Goodell is throwing in the Mets bullpen. My recommendation is make eye contact with Keith before you start down the road of asking him a question. Just make eye contact. We're together in this. <laughs> <laughs> Smith hits it to his counterpart, Picacello. He's going to tap him on the shoulder every time I want to address him. That's right. Get physical with him. <laughs> There's Goodell. There's Travis Tyrone. Last year, Tyrone was so good at camp. The Mets gave him an award for being the best rookie in spring training. Some early candidates for that this year. I think Philip Evans is one of them. I think I got that award one year. The best player in spring. Best rookie player in spring? Yeah, not, not exactly a Hall of Fame material, but you'll take it wherever you can get it. Still have it? No. I don't know what it was called then. I, I must have won it in 84 because I made the team that year, but. I didn't know that. They should call it the Ron Darling Award. <laughs> yeah. Not Ronald or Ronald Jr. RTJ <laughs> Memorial Award. <laughs> Well, Green's always had a very good slider, breaking ball. We'll see a starter when he was in the Yankee uniform, started as a starter in the Tigers uniform, now has found a home in the bullpen. It's a ground ball off of Tyrone's bat. Zach Cox, the new third baseman, though, couldn't handle it. Tyrone's on with two outs. Well, this is not Zach Cox's fault here. Bad hop. He does everything you're supposed to do. He gets in front of it, watch the hop. Came right up into his midsection. Looks like it caught his right hand, too. He's ready. And the ball just came up on him. Keeps the inning going for Wilmer Becerra. Double his last time. Goes after the first pitch. And Simcox, the new shortstop, retires Tyrone at second. You could be.
four scoreless innings. Got some help on the defensive side from Dominic Smith. And Joanna Cespedes launched his third home run of the spring. So the Mets have a four to one lead on the Tigers. Sounds like Cespedes picked out that music. You know how crazy life can be? Is that first time I heard that, I was just kiddingly saying, I didn't know we could afford Steve Martin and his banjo uh, for that music. McCann trying to bunt. Eric Goodell almost knocked the bat out of his hands. Pretty much did. And uh, so I'm at the Teterboro Airport. First, we'll see the bunt here. Not really a bunt. Ball runs in, and McCann tried to get out of the way. It knocked the bat out of his hand. I'm at the Teterboro Airport. Who comes in? Steve Martin. I mean, that's how crazy life is. I, I, I mean, I wanted to tell him the story, but I was too intimidated, so I didn't <laughs> say anything. I just looked at him. Champ Stewart puts away McCann. And there's one out here in the seventh. Coming up as the 2017 NFL year officially begins, the crew discusses the Jets' early free agency moves, plus what's next from Mike McCagnan and his plans to round out the 2017 roster on Jets Nation. Free agency special coming up next only on SN1. I'm going to leave it alone today. My friends that are Jets fans were all over me yesterday because of my comment about the nation. It's a mean green coming your way. <laughs> Ficacello goes the other way. This ball hit well. And Biondi will watch it get out. Dominic Ficacello with an opposite field home run off of Eric Adele. Well, you get a jet stream here some days at this ballpark, first day of the field, that anything up in the air towards left field is going to carry. Now one was hit well by Ficacello, but it carried also. First ball, fastball, hitting up in the zone. And from the J.D. Martinez school, he wanted to hit a fly ball. That one got out. Yep, hit fly ball. Sometimes they leave the yard. It's Mikey Matuk. Matuk had some very good minor league seasons in the Rays organization. Came up as a rookie at 295. Last year had some injuries, only hit 195. The Rays were done with it. Sent him to Detroit for virtually nothing, mm. a player to be named later. He's one of those guys, uh, uh, exceptional speed, great athlete. Maybe this age worked against him at 27. Actually put on some muscle in the offseason. Mm. Some were concerned that by doing so, he limited his flexibility and his athleticism. So it's interesting you say that because I remember him when he was in Tampa Bay, and I, I didn't remember him as strong and powerful as he's built now. He strikes out against Eric Goodell. I'd have to say this is the signature pitch for Goodell is that split finger fastball that he throws. Now Dixon Machado the batter. Goes after the first pitch and hammers it. Machado's aboard. More like Ficacello, he jumped all over the first pitch fastball and a line drive from Machado up the middle. So now Juan Perez stands in for the first time. Perez was in the Cubs organization last year at AAA Iowa. He's had some big league time with the Giants. Signed to a minor league deal by the Tigers this offseason. First pitch curveball from Goodell. I was saying to myself, I remember Perez for something. He's a New York City kid, DeWitt Clinton High School. 
Remember, we talked about that when he came in with the Giants. This might drop. That does. Carpio gave it a long run, but couldn't reach it. Juan Perez out of the Bronx with a base hit. And runners on the corners now for the Tigers. Couldn't place that ball any better than that. Like a lob wedge landed out there. Now A.J. Simcox is batting for the first time. Pretty strong year in Lakeland last year for Simcox at 262. World Baseball Classic has thinned out the rosters a little bit, giving the A.J. Simcoxes of the world an opportunity. Mets have, what, 11 players that are away? Yep. That's a lot. Tigers have a bunch, too. That one gets away, bounces back toward Nito, but not far enough to stop Dixon Machado from scoring. Perez ends up at second. It's a one-run game. A breaking ball there from Goodell. Nito went down, but didn't get all the way down. A good base running by Machado. The Tigers have gotten a couple of runs in this seventh inning against Eric Goodell. They scored once in the sixth off Montero. Tying run in scoring position with A.J. Simcox at the plate. Throw behind the runner at second. He's out. What a throw by Tomas Nito. Juan Perez took a big leap toward third. Guillaume cuts in behind him. And Nito's throw right on target as the Mets maintain a lead.
High State has been with the grandkids here at First State of Field. Tomas Nito looks at a strike from Matt Boyd and Twenty appearances last year. Eighteen of them starts for the young boy. It's Nito out in front of that as we send it down to Steve Gelbs. Brought to you by City, standing by with Jacob Degrom. Wayne, thanks a lot, Jacob Degrom. Four scoreless today after two scoreless in his first start of spring. So you know it looks almost like you're in mid-season form. How do you feel out there so far? I definitely feel good. Um, you know, like I said before, I think. Uh, once I was able to start throwing, the main thing was working on my mechanics. And uh, I said I was flying open a lot last year and my arm was dragging. Um, and, you know, today I was able to throw my change up pretty much when I wanted. And I think that's a big sign for me. You mentioned the mechanics after the last start, like you were just saying. Last season, do you think that, you know, the lat and, and obviously the arm where we now you had the elbow surgery, do you think that that played a large role in, you know, you having more difficulty repeating the mechanics? Um, you know, it's easy to point blame on something. Um, I felt like every time I took the mound, I was able to go out there and keep us in a ball game and give us a chance to win. Um, you know, I don't think that stuff helped, but early in the year after the lat thing, I, I felt fine. It was just, I guess I was battling the mechanics, and I don't know if that kind of um, made my elbow start to hurt and then, you know, ultimately ended up getting surgery. So I don't know if that bad mechanics, you know, started that elbow injury. You know, you say you were able to give you guys a chance to win almost every time out. And it was the funniest thing to me anyway about last year is you kind of being disappointed after starts, but still by most standards having a stellar season, a 3.04 ERA. Why do you think you have this knack and this ability to battle and to keep the team competitive even when you're not feeling your best? Um, you know, I think I try to keep it simple, one pitch at a time and uh, control what I can control. Um, you know, I think when you start getting out there and trying to overthink it when you kind of get in trouble. Um, you know, the, the guy gets a hit, so what? You got to try to get the next guy out, get a ground ball, get a double play. Um, and I think that I just try to keep it simple. And, you know, when I'm out there, uh, just give it 100%. And, you know, like I said, control what I can control. Anything in particular you're working on this camp? Um, just throwing my change up more. Uh, I kind of got away from it last year. And, you know, like I've said, that's probably my second best pitch. Um, and, you know, today was actually really good. We saw you uh, holding your son Jackson there before the game today, almost a year old. How, is, how has that been having him out here and, you know, watching him grow this offseason? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, you know, it's a, everybody says words can't describe it, but they really can't. Um, having him around and, and just watching him grow and learn new things every day, it's awesome. And, you know, today I, he, my wife brought him down and I got to hold him for a minute before I went out there and pitched, and that was, that was really cool. He's a good luck charm. Yeah, he is. All right, Jacob DeGrom, thanks so much, man, for the time. All right, thank you, Steve. All right, Wayne, back to you. All right, Steve, thank you very much. After a couple of strikeouts by Matt Boyd, Luis Guillorme punches a single to center. You know what was really interesting about that interview for an old guy like me who used to play? Steve really gave him a bounce pass to make an excuse for a season last year, and he did not. He didn't make any excuses, and that's what makes Jacob special. Dixon Machado with the flip to second as the inning comes to an end, but Jacob DeGrom, as you just heard from Steve, enjoying fatherhood at the ballpark. Also enjoyed a pretty good day on the mound. <laughs> this baby. Okay, traffic's a mess. I got a
get to City Field on Saturday night, April 8th, when the Mets play the Miami Marlins at 7.10 p.m. It's the first fireworks night of 2017, where after the game, fans can enjoy a fireworks show that will light up the City Field sky. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash fireworks. Told that's an osprey run. Not a herring. Not a herring. <laughs> Do you know in which minor league city the Osprey play? Oh, I don't. Fouled away by A.J. Simcox to start the eighth against Chase and Bradford. They play in Missoula, Montana. The Missoula Osprey. Wow. I'm bad with the um, minor league names, bad with college nicknames. 56 games last year for Bradford. A.J. Simcox gives Guillaume a try short. Start of the game at third. And retires A.J. Simcox. Time to check in around the majors. Presented by City, A.J. Cole had a good day for the Nationals. Jared Eikhoff, not so much for the Phillies. The Red Sox going at it with Team USA. They will play their first game in the World Baseball Classic tomorrow night. Could this be the year that Team USA wins their first WBC? Huh. Two for Japan, one for the Dominican Republic, none for the U.S. team. You told me yesterday, right, the uh, U.S. versus Dominican Republic game tomorrow night is sold out, right? On Saturday. Saturday. Sold out at Marlins Park. U.S. will play Columbia first tomorrow, then the DR on Saturday. Bradford. Couldn't get that one. It was smoked for a base hit. Now Mike Gerber will be the batter. He had a nice year too at Lakeland. Bradford's kicked around the minor leagues now. The Las Vegas native, he's gotten a pitch at Las Vegas for a couple of years, right at home. Well, if you're gonna try to chase your dream, it's better to chase it in your own bed, right? Bradford went to Silverado High School in Vegas. Let's have a new catcher. Ali Sanchez is in the game. John Mora is now playing center field in place of Champ Stewart. There's John Mora. Lefty. Saying hi. <laughs> Talking about Bradford being from Vegas, actually was a ball boy growing up for the team there. Once the Las Vegas Stars, now the 51s. Couldn't get that call, a little bit high. Thirty-fifth round pick. He had a tough time at left-handed batters last year. They had three thirty-nine against him. Saturday. NL East matchup as the Washington Nationals come here to first data field. They will not have Daniel Murphy. He's on Team USA 
in the World Baseball Classic. Mets and Nats presented by City. Coverage begins Saturday at 1. Only on SNY should be Steven Matz on the mound Saturday for the Mets. Herber takes strike three call. Bradford went to the back door. Just picked off that outside corner with a little slider. And maybe got the call from C.B. Buckner. Here's Brett Pill. You see a big number on Pill's back, number 84. But he's been around. He's 32 years old. Former Giant. Hasn't been in the big leagues, though, in almost four years now. He sometimes... Not so glamorous life of a baseball player like Brett Pill. You get a few tries in the big leagues, you hang around for a little bit, and then spend the rest of that time on buses and in airports trying to get back. That's right. You get the reputation as kind of a 4A player. Means that maybe not good enough to play in the major leagues, but a guy that can certainly fill a roster in AAA. Pill spent a little bit of time in Korea. You ever go overseas to play Japan or Korea? I never, I never did. Um, always wanted to, but never did. Slow tapper, Mazzilli can't make the play. And the inning will continue for Detroit, two on here in the eighth. Well, that'll be a, a base hit for Pill. It's a do or die kind of play for Mazzilli. Come up with it clean, you have a shot. LJ was not able to. Now Grayson Griner, the batter, at double A last year. It's this ball well. Biondi got turned around. It's over his head. Zach Cox comes home. Hill gets into third. Grayson Griner has tied this game with a double. It's a little breaking ball from Bradford over the middle of the plate, and Griner did not miss it. I don't think Biondi was going to have a play on this ball anyway, but getting turned around didn't help. Now it's Ficacello. He had an opposite field home run his last time. That was off of Eric Goodell in the seventh. That's relievers have had a tough time after Jacob DeGrom worked the first four innings without a run allowed. Montero gave up one, Goodell two, and now one off of Bradford. away from Sanchez but not far enough for Pill who doesn't run all that well to make a beeline for the plate. Pitch by Bradford mentioned how he had so much trouble against lefties in the past. Well, this is a good pitch here. A little change up down and away. Well placed by Bradford. Yeah, that could be an equalizer against the left handed batter if he can get some consistency with that pitch. And Ficacello goes down looking. Strike three cold. As Chasen Bradford leaves the go-ahead runs on the bases, but the Tigers have tied this game.
Home half of the eighth as Patrick Biondi bats for the first time today. Matt Boyd, the front runner to be the Tigers' fifth starter in his second inning of relief here today. Interesting use of Boyd, right? A guy that you think might be uh, one of your starters and using him at the end of a ball game. Boyd had his ups and downs last year, a 4.53 ERA. Pitched a pretty good game against the Mets last August at Comerica Park. That was that game that ended on a play at the plate. Biondi chases the slider. And there's one down. SNY's play ball presented by Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center is back, teaming up with the New York Mets to help local baseball and softball leagues with grants, clinics, and Mets game experiences. Right now, we're accepting applications for local youth baseball and softball leagues. To nominate a league in need, apply today at sny.tv slash play ball. LJ Mazzilli takes a strike. Mazzilli, who couldn't handle a slow chopper off the bat of Brett Pill, extending the top of the eighth. Tigers tied it with the next batter. Broken bat roller here. Zach Cox makes the play. I like what I see so far from Boyd. What I saw last year and against the Mets and also here. A lot of arms and legs, a lot of deception from Matt. In that game against the Mets last year, Boyd gave up home runs to Jay Bruce and Curtis Granderson. They were the only two left-handed hitters to homer off of Boyd all last <laughs> season. See how Dominic Smith does hit list today. Well, that's a good breaking pitch. High leg kick, all arms and legs, kind of hides the baseball very well. Falls behind Smith. Everybody in the Mets organization would like to see more power from Dom Smith. Skies this one. It's going to hang, though. Juan Perez puts it away, and Matt Boyd works a 1 2 3 8. We're off to the ninth inning in Port St. Lucie, all knotted up.
Tonight on Geico Sports Night, a look at today's Major League Baseball action. NFL free agency has begun, and March Madness tips off at Madison Square Garden. Coming up on Geico Sports Night tonight, starting at 10.30, only on SN1. Back-to-back -back Las Vegas native pitchers for the Mets, Paul Seawald. Tony Romo's the big name for the free agency, right? Certainly one of them as Romo... Who knows what condition he's even in yeah. at this point in his career. Jacoby Jones is the batter. Talked about the Tigers center field situation. Tyler Collins, Mikey Montuk battling for that spot, but Jones has a chance too. And he gets this ball a long way. Question is, will it stay fair? It is a fair ball and a long home run down the left field line for Jacoby Jones. Well, that increased his chances, Wayne. I'd say so. <laughs> Jones, a top 10 prospect in the Tigers' system. He's not known for his power. <laughs> And he knew he hit enough of it. Just wanted to make sure it stayed fair. We almost got the Carlton Fisk yeah, from him. I really did. If I'd have known that, I'd have pulled out the Dick Stockton call. This is Logan Watkins. Former Cub farmhand. Seawald keeps it near him. Dominic Smith, another pick at first. Hopefully Seawald okay. That ball came rocketing his way. Boy, this ball caught a lot of flesh. Line drive back. Looks like it hit him maybe on the right ankle or right foot. Bounce throw to first. The sound probably caught him in the shoe, in the cleat. Ray Ramirez, the Mets trainer, out for a quick word. Seawold seems fine. And Juan Perez will be the batter. Seawold is good friends with Brian Harper, Bryce Harper's brother. Of course, the last two National League MVPs reside in Vegas. Check swing. Carpio with the catch, two down. Chris Bryant, last year's MVP, Bryce Harper the year before. It's going to be interesting to see, uh, especially if Harper makes the trip over here on Saturday, if he's going to have a, a rebound year, down year for him last year. The way they're talking in Washington, they make it seem like it's a foregone conclusion that Harper's a national this year and next year, and that's it. Wow. Well, what did he say? They, he was asked this winter, uh, someone said, is he going to be the next, uh, the first $300 million man? He said, why not 400? <laughs> <laughs> why limit it to 300 million? But it's an unusual free agent position because, what does he be, 26 yeah. going into free agency? Uh, I mean, that's eight really good years you can expect. At least. And he's had such a, you know, came up at 19 years old. He's had a, a brilliant start to his career. You would expect that he's starting to come into the best years of his career. Even though two years ago, he didn't get much better than that. A strikeout tipped into the glove of Sanchez as Paul Seawald gets out of the inning, but a home run allowed to Jacoby Jones gives the Tigers the lead. Would you be into doing?
Matt Boyd's in his third inning of work as he starts off Kevin Kazmarski with a strike. Boyd has only allowed one hit in two scoreless innings. The likely fifth starter for the Tigers this year. Finishing this game. Trying to at least. We talked about Phil Regan being a vulture and dropping in for a win. This is what Matt Boyd's doing today. In line for the victory now. Pitching the final three innings of this game. Yeah, he's been the most impressive Detroit pitcher so far this afternoon. Anibal Sanchez got through a couple of innings, but then allowed four runs in the third. Mets haven't scored since. It's Brad Osmus, the manager, and pitching coach Rich Doobie of the Tigers. Big hole on the right side, and Biondi, rather Kazmarski, has a base hit. Second baseman ranged far to his left, but couldn't get that ball. Had a lot of topspin off the bat of Kazmarski. It's Logan Watkins at second base. Shaded up the middle. He had a long way to run to try to get that ball. Now here's Wilmer Becerra. Double earlier today. Sarah has a little pop. Wind still blowing out toward left. Sarah represents the winning run. Good move there by Boyd. Says Marski better stay close. Sarah coming back from right shoulder surgery, which ended his season last year early. Good cut there, but it's 0 because of that surgery we haven't seen him play too much outfield in spring so far but doing well enough to swing the bat hit 312 last year even though he was banged up that one almost hit him catcher Ali Sanchez is on deck Sarah battling against a pretty good pitcher in Matt Boyd. It's three changeups in this at bat from Boyd to, to Sarah. So Boyd likes that breaking ball against the left-handed hitters, loves the changeup against the right-handed hitters. Another check on Kazmarski, who does have good speed. 14 steals last year for Kazmarski between Columbia and St. Lucie. Big lead, too, at first. Sarah fouled it off his foot. Boyd buried that one to the back foot. It looked like a cutter he threw inside there to Becerra. Sarah getting looked at quickly. 
Doing a hop around, see if that'll help. It's not broken, I'm all right. Stays alive again. Boyd got through the first two innings pretty quickly. He's allowed a leadoff base hit to Kazmarski here at the bottom of the ninth. And Wilmer Becerra testing Matt Boyd, the Washington State native. Another throw to first. Boyd actually went to Oregon State University, played with Michael Conforto there. <laughs> they actually worked out a lot together this offseason. Everything Con Conforto told Steve Gelbs earlier about his workout regimen, his eating habits in the offseason, he shared all of that program with Boyd. using up some of that stamina that he's built up to throw the ball to first base a few times. Right. Strike three as Boyd, sick of battling Becerra, just tried to blow him away with the high fastball, and it worked. Well, that's one instance, a lot of change-ups, and then he followed it by letting one loose here and threw it right by Becerra. Well, whatever fifth starter battle is happening in Tigers camp, Matt Boyd trying to put that away. Hmm. Here's Ali Sanchez. Tough play for Watkins, but he makes it with the catcher Sanchez running. As Marski scoots up to second. Now John Mora will be the batter. Mets have won five of their last seven games in spring. The Tigers, by the way, are only three and ten this spring, so they've had their problems closing out victories. Three and ten record has brought a little angst to the fan base. It's hard to judge, though. They have so many of their best players are away at the WBC. John Mora at the plate. He's totaled 19 triples over the last two seasons at 12 in 2015 at Savannah. Only 34 pitches for Boyd, 27 strikes, only seven balls. Now he's been sharp. Detroit has done all of its scoring in the last four innings. They were down 4 nothing, and now Matt Boyd trying to close out a 5-4 win. John Mora trying to spoil that for Boyd with Kazmarski at second, base hit to the outfield would likely tie it. And it's three and one. Sends a high fly to left. The wind's going to carry it. Perez is back. It's off the wall. That ties the game as Kazmarski scores. Mora's on his way to third. The ball was bobbled in left field as Mora has an RBI triple. A 
Well, a good call, Wayne. Got up on that jet stream again, but nice that bat by Mora. Stays in against the lefty and peels this ball to left field. As we've seen many left fielders today get turned around because of that win, and Perez doesn't come close. Had Mora seen Perez drop the ball, I wonder if he would have tried to score. It's gonna like an Alex Gordon yeah. moment. Except with better speed. <laughs> Here's Guillaume, a chance to win it. I told you about Mora and his triples. 19 of them the last two years. A punt from Guillaume, but he popped it up, and Ficacello makes the catch in foul ground. We'll see if the managers want to play a 10th inning as this game is tied after nine. Terry Collins That would be a not. no. That would be a no. And neither does Brad Osmus. <laughs> so that's that. John Mora keeps the Mets from a loss. And this one ends up in a 5-5 tie here at first day to field. Well, the Mets scored all their runs on two two-run home runs from Champ Stewart and, of course, every day Cespedes, who hits the ball is right on the nose so far in spring training. And then push that one across here with a good at bat by Mora. Jacob DeGrom really was the story though, Wayne. Just four outstanding innings for Jake. And New York Mets baseball on SNY brought to you by Hyundai during the Hyundai spring cleaning sales event. You can get great deals on every new Hyundai. See your Hyundai dealer today. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. By City, proud partner of the New York Mets. And by Audi, visit a tri-state Audi dealer today to get behind the wheel of the Audi model you've always wanted. Final score in Port St. Lucie, Mets 5, Tigers 5. Our next broadcast will come to you on Saturday afternoon. Steven Matz, the likely starter for the Mets against the Washington Nationals at 1 o'clock here in Port St. Lucie. Jacob DeGrom looks strong today. Yoenis Cespedes hit a home run. The Mets and Tigers finish tied. For Ron Darling, I'm Wayne Randazzo. We say so long from Port St. Lucie.